Oh, he's there. Oh, he's, oh he, was on, he was on video link. I didn't realise. Jared, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right, thanks. Sorry, I was looking for the phone line to light up. Jared, kind of one of the uh, well, producers of uh, River of Freedom, a, a movie uh, I was lucky enough to get a look at early on. Um, now, you guys, Jared, I know we're looking for international distribution and streaming and everything. You went to Apple TV, what, a couple of weeks ago you, you launched on Apple TV? Yeah, we, uh, we ended up partnering with a distributor out of the UK called Journeyman Pictures. Uh, Journeyman Pictures are actually owned by a Kiwi, funnily enough. We didn't know that when we were introduced to them. But uh, Mark Stuck uh, is, a, is a Takaka boy. Yeah. And uh, he has a very encouraging email back, said, um, nice to hear from the motherland. And um, so we, we started our conversation there. And initially, there was a bit of reluctance to pick it up due to its length. As you know, it's two and a half hours long. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, we talked it through a bit more and uh, Journeyman decided that now was the time to come on board with the film because of its momentum you know, and its success yeah. at the box office in New Zealand. So there's good marketing opportunities there. Mark and Journeyman uh, were early adopters of the online um, you know, online wave. So they, so they, um, they had good uh, access to Apple, Google, Vimeo, uh, Amazon. So they uh, really plugged it, got it on, uh, got it online, and um, you know it's been doing really well since it's um, you know since it launched a few days ago. All right. Uh, so give first, us when you say really well, what does that mean? Give us, give us. Where well, the first twenty four hours, we were number four in New Zealand um, for the, in movies on Apple TV. Yeah. And uh, we've been sitting at about number six ever since then. Um, you know, which is pretty unusual for a documentary. First of all. Yeah. Um, you know, we were, we're 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 pegged a month back again. We're with our good friends at Oppenheimer and Barbie, um, you know, and uh, Equalizer Three. Denzel Washington sitting at the top, but um, we're the only um, local film, and we're the only documentary in, the, in New Zealand's top ten there with um, with Apple TV. We can't really see the numbers fully for um, the other platforms yet because they come out monthly. Um, so we, I think we're I think I just got an email overnight saying we've um, I think we've sort of sold almost five hundred. Um, alone on uh, Prime uh, uh, copies of the film, so it's doing better than Journeyman expected. You know, documentaries yeah. generally have a soft opening. Wait for a bit of word of mouth. Wait for um, all the networks to tee up and, and align with the um, with the promotion and marketing of the film before they start seeing the um, the sales come through. But um, you know, same as when we're in the theatres. You know, the people just came came running. You know, wanted to see the film. You know, wanted to um, get a better understanding of you know what that perspective was, and um, and it's not only an understanding, but it's also it's also just a, a really engaging film, as you know. And yeah. I watched it again last night. The um, we're just going through captions because the film going out to um, our international friends. Our Kiwi accent is a little broad for some of them. So, uh, are you really having to put were, English subtitles on the movie? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, it's, it's standard practice, <laughs> but you can switch them on and off. The usual, but yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of the the uh, te reo, the Maori words aren't uh, have no. Oh, of course, uh, they have no understanding of it. Yeah, you know, we talk about fucka papa or the marae. They don't know what that means. So, of course, under the new government, you wouldn't have been allowed to say that anyway. <laughs> So, um, so no, yeah, really encouraging, um, yeah. you know, and you know, and exciting as well because um, you know New Zealand, you know, our sales in New Zealand are doing well because that's you know we're obviously our, our biggest audiences, but we're um, you know we're working hard on reaching out to international um, markets and uh, seeing what we can do to you know to get that message out. We've had a few you know uh, interviews online, uh, and that's how. It, you know, how we've got to generate this momentum. Are you thinking about momentum. Khan? Are you thinking about Sundance? Are you thinking about no, international no. competition? We, we applied to a lot of them already, um, Sean, and they ignored us. Yeah, they um, yeah, literally ignored. Uh, yeah, our, the closest we got was the Tahiti Film Festival. Um, they declined our, um, the jury declined our application in the end, but accepted our uh, dear old friend uh, misinformation. Susie Wiles made it. But um, we're still considering really so. And look, I'm interested in this thing. So there is a kind of your branded cookers. No matter the quality of the film, there is a prejudice against it. As yeah, a documentary. There's, 
yeah, there's still um, there's still a lot of resistance out there. Um, we feel, um, you know, the, 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 the yeah, we've sent out over 300 uh, press releases to different media outlets around the world, and it's still, you know, silence. You know, the the silence speaks volumes, as they say. Nobody uh, wants to touch it. Um, you know, so we have to go. We just have to bypass that and go straight to the audience. You know, and find them ourselves. We get a little bit of coverage, you know, through the likes of the platform and and, and other sort of. What about media in New outlets. Zealand? New Zealand media have they warmed to you? Because nothing we've had little, nothing brings in friends bit, like success. No, well that's it. A little bit of warming. Um, you know, Graham Tuckett put us on within his uh, top ten films of twenty twenty three. You know, it wasn't specifically uh, number four is where he listed New Zealand uh, documentary filmmakers, and we were listed in that uh, collection. But um, you know, that's it's always still great to make a top ten. Uh, there was another reviewer at this at Stuff who, you know, reviewed it um, critically and gave it a um, you know his spin on what he thought it was, and it was still a, an encouraging review. Uh, but he was sort of attacked a little bit online for supporting us. You know, still not allowed to. Um, you ever thought of to... playing it in double feature with what was it called, Fire and Fury? Yeah. <laughs> so people <laughs> could view them yeah. side by yeah. side. Well, we still haven't had the um, the uh, you haven't got Paula Penfold and myself on yet to have a conversation. Oh yeah, that. well, <laughs> and then hell froze over, didn't it? <laughs> uh, <Drew>. um, <laughs> Look, can I just say, I want to say thank you to you guys for being available to us. I have found it not just an interesting thing to view as a movie and a piece of art, but also it's, um, you know, I felt like I've, uh, I have uh, learned to engage with a group of people I don't entirely agree with, but we're still New Zealanders and we still care about the same thing. So I found it almost philosophically a really interesting and, and kind of rewarding um, you know, relationship we've had uh, around this movie for the year, which is one of the reasons I wanted to get you on. I think uh, your movie is a far more tolerant, approachable and accessible exposition uh, of some positions that New Zealanders might not entirely understand than just yelling at people or telling people they're crazy. That's why I liked it. I think it's a step towards dialogue. It's not a step back from it. You know, and I again say, if someone hasn't seen it, they bloody well should. Yeah, the um, I mean, and, and it's entirely the same uh, perspective from our side as well, Sean. Like, we don't agree with everything that gets discussed on the platform, you know, and you know, we even cop flack on our side for engaging with the platform, but we see it as an important step, and we see it as um, we it's an outlet for us, and it's an opportunity for us to engage with a broader audience as well. Yeah. And um, it's not something that we want to shy away from. If we had interviews, and exactly like um, you know, David Seymour spoke about before, if, um, you know, we want to be on uh, speaking to people who disagree with us in media so that we can share our story, not because we want to convert people, but just we want to also tell them what we think about things. Yeah, and, and it's your right. You know. really and I once again say, if people see your documentary, I think it gives you that... It gives you a perspective we simply were not given by the mainstream media about what was going on there, um, which yeah, is the, why it's so important. The, it was interesting. That's you know, in the, I was just mentioning the stuff review that happened recently, and you know that that um, person got you know attacked by his fellow um, you know media uh, colleagues. And and it was the classic statement of you know it was a, you know it was a really interesting film this is the attack but um, you know they they excluded all the right wing grifters that were there and all, all the bad things that happened and I was watching it again last night and I was just sort of like being there myself and experiencing it I never felt that there was a right wing grifter vibe going on yeah there were people there that were saying things that I disagreed with but that wasn't the film that we were making you know we were yeah. making the film sort of go around and pick up every single perspective that was there. But, it, but it's the way that it's continually portrayed.